Hi, David Dodge here. Welcome to Green Energy Futures and part two of our Chasing Net Zero series. This week's episode, Net Zero Beautiful. Building a net zero home is an intricate dance between technology, design and location. This week we talked to Louis Pereira, an Edmonton architect who sees his home, LG House, as a piece of art. He pursues sustainability through location, location, location. Then we talked to Kim Gould about a University of Calgary net zero solar decathlon project that fashioned a solar home in the shape of a turtle. This week we chase net zero that is beautiful, seek sustainable housing by rethinking the idea of a home, and redesigns mature neighborhoods into hubs of a modern sustainable lifestyle. Net zero to me is uh, minimizing your uh, footprint um, and uh, developing a house that is going to be very responsible um, environmentally. And uh, whether that means, um, um, you know, using less energy or uh, taking up less of um, uh, square area in your development. Um, you know, I, I think there's a lot of advantages to uh, developing in infill in areas where the infrastructure is already there. That's home designer Louis Pereira in LG House, named after Louis and his partner Giselle. When he talks about using less space, he means it. He built his house on a 25 foot lot. Here's how the City of Edmonton's zoning rules referred to the lot. Inadequate, insufficient, uh, substandard was some of the words that were chosen. And um, I, I think it's the wrong way to approach this. But Pereira battled the system and built a beautiful, modern, functional home on this small footprint lot. While it's not net zero, it's more energy efficient than your typical build. The windows are triple glazed and the foundation is insulated. And he uses the narrow nature of the building to get cross breezes and has an operable skylight to keep the house cool by using the stack effect. On, on our hot days where we're hovering in that 30 above range, um, I still find it very comfortable um, in the house. And, uh, and that's without any need or use for uh, uh, air conditioning. Above all, Pereira built a more affordable home that's absolutely beautiful. It's been featured in newspapers, magazines, and on the web. With his well-designed, functional, and efficient house on a half-size lot, Pereira is also helping a mature neighborhood increase its density and make better use of expensive, already-built urban infrastructure such as schools, parks, and transit. I went from a, a two-car household to just one vehicle, um, and uh, that um, means that we're less car dependent and we're closer to amenities. Um, we're uh, living in an area that is very walkable. Location helps reduce your energy footprint and good design, well, it puts a smile on your face that lasts a long time. However, we wouldn't be talking about net zero if builders, engineers and architects weren't continually striving to build better, more energy efficient solar powered homes. Experiments drive the innovation cycle forward but most people don't want to live in an experimental house. That's why the solar decathlon is so important. University of Calgary solar decathlon participant Kim Gould explains. I'm Kim Gould. I'm a junior project manager at Pivotal Projects. And as a student, I worked on the project you can see behind me, the Sonova Spopi Solar House. University of Calgary students designed a net zero home that can be built for $300,000. It was entered into the 2011 Solar Decathlon competition held in Washington, D.C. Their home featured a unique dome shape that was inspired by traditional Prairie First Nations structures. So this house was designed for the Treaty 7 communities of southern Alberta and it's rounded responding to the traditional forms of the buildings that you would see, teepees as an obvious example. Uh, the shape of it, actually, when we were in design, suggested a turtle, and that carried through the entire design process. One of the challenges they ended up having to solve was optimizing the solar array with its curved turtle shell-like roof. It was a significant engineering challenge looking basically at how far we could push the boundary of where those panels could be angled, you know, from the sort of optimal south-facing exposure. And what we found was that with the curvature that we finally arrived on, the overall array, which includes 35 panels on the angle and then two on the top, basically flat, 
is less than 5% less output than you would see having those 37 panels all faced exactly due south optimal angle over the course of an entire year. To reach net zero, 8.3 kilowatts of solar PV was installed. The home uses an air source heat pump to efficiently heat and cool the home using electricity. And of course, they used energy efficient appliances. Looking at energy conservation, I mean, everything that we selected for the house was, when you're looking at appliances, when you're looking at systems, we're all selected with energy conservation in mind. There's no point in going and using renewable energies if you're just going to waste that energy on inefficient appliances, inefficient equipment. So all of the appliances that we have in the house are Energy Star. In 2002, the Solar Decathlon competition was established to prove that solar energy technology could power a home. Are we there yet? I think it really has a place in the market now. I mean, when you're looking at the economics of solar and how much more viable photovoltaics on a home have become, even over the course of like the past two years, the gains are just astonishing. That mission of the Solar Decathlon has evolved from can it be done to how can we make it affordable, practical and applied to everyday homes. This has been Net Zero Beautiful, part two in our Chasing Net Zero series. Next week we present part three, Net Zero Evolution. The journey from complex to simple in super energy efficient homes. For Green Energy Futures, I'm David Dodge. To learn more about LG House or the Spopey House, head to greenenergyfutures.ca to read our blog and check out our photos, podcasts, and resources. 